All right, guys. Well, here we are. The day we've all been waiting for. We finally have the first official trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the highly anticipated sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Now, this is something we talked about about two weeks ago now um, with, uh, with the fact that it was confirmed. Hey, we were getting a, a brand new trailer on this day, Tuesday, December 13th. And so that actually is the last video I posted on the channel. So sorry, I haven't uh, posted in the last couple of weeks here on this channel. Uh, but we are now back to talk about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is a film I am just so absolutely excited for. Uh, this movie, of course, comes out in June, June 2nd, 2023. Everything we've been hearing about it, it sounds and looks amazing. And really, this trailer is amazing. And, and the funny thing about it is it's not even like a, your average trailer. It's not a normal trailer. It really doesn't even feel like a trailer. Because really what the the crux of this trailer is a conversation between Miles and his mother. And like, sure, we get cool stuff with like a bunch of Spider-Verse variants. But that's really all we get. I mean, we got, got a little recap of the first movie. And like, there's not really a whole lot of new footage here, but I don't care because it shows us like three different shots with like a hundred different Spider-Men and it's amazing. And that's what makes these trailer breakdowns so fun is trying to figure out like which Spider-Verse variants those are and like, oh, this is from that game. This is from that movie. This is from that series. This is from that comic. Um, So that of course uh, is exactly what we're going to be doing and talking about in today's video where we are breaking down the official trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. But first... I want to just talk about what this movie is even about because, you know, obviously the first film was a masterpiece, one of the greatest Spider-Man films of all time. But what is the sequel even about? Like, we're all excited for it, but we don't even know what this movie's about. Well, yesterday we got our first official synopsis for this film where it revealed that basically uh, we know that the Spot is the main villain of this film, not only this film, but also the second part movie uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse, which will be coming out in summer of 2024. Basically, from the sound of the synopsis, we have Miles and Gwen, probably along with a couple other allies as well, are going to be fighting Spider-Man 2099 and a couple other Spider-Verse characters because it's a difference of opinion in the way of going about stopping the spot. I'm assuming it's probably something along the lines of like, you know, Miguel O'Hare, Spider-Man 2099 and his crew, they want to just go ahead and kill the spot and possibly even before he even becomes the spot. Maybe that's something they're able to do uh, through the magic of the Spider-Verse. And then Miles is probably coming at, at it from a perspective of like, no, we can save him. There has to be a way we can do this without killing him and without losing another life, even if it, you know, puts the whole multiverse at risk, you know, no big deal. Um, So I think that's really interesting. Definitely not something that I was expecting for this, but that's why we kind of get a glimpse in this trailer of almost like a civil war for the Spider-Verse. It's like Spider-Man versus Spider-Man versus Spider-Man versus Spider-Woman versus Spider-Monkey. Um, so it, it definitely gets pretty crazy. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this and break down the brand new, I think technically first official trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Sony Pictures Animation. In association with Marvel, because of course this is not put out by Disney and Marvel Studios, this is from Sony. And we open up, like I said, on this conversation between Miles and his mother, which is something I just really love to see here because... That was something I really enjoyed from the first film is getting to see Miles and his relationship with his parents. Uh, we use it more so with his father in the first film, and I really loved that story between those two characters. Um, but just this conversation is really interesting because we know that there's been a bit of a time jump. We know Miles is growing up, and you know you get that classic conversation that I think all mothers have with their sons, where it's like, you know, you're my baby boy, and I just want to take care of you, but now you're growing up, you're maturing, you're changing, and I can't protect you anymore. So I want to make sure that you are going to be able to protect yourself. So I just really love this conversation. You can tell that Miles really loves his mother. Um, I It's been a while since I watched the first movie, so I don't remember for sure. But the way it's portrayed in the scene almost feel like she knows that he's Spider-Man. I don't know if she does or not. Um, I don't remember that happening in the first film. 
uh, but maybe that's something that's been revealed since then. Um, just from the way of things that she's saying about like, you know, you're putting your risk, at, your life at risk every day and I can't protect you, but I want to make sure that you're going to be safe. So again, I just really love this and I hope we get uh, a deeper exploration of uh, Miles and his family and that whole relationship through this movie. But then we get a bit of a recap where basically, you know, we get the iconic shots from the first one. We have Miles buying the Spider-Man suit uh, with that amazing Stanley cameo, um, which took place uh, just shortly after his real life death, um, quite unfortunately. Uh, but just what a beautiful cameo it was. Um, just one of my favorites right there. Um, you have Miles, of course, trying on the Spider-Man suit, and then Miles training with Peter B. Parker, him meeting Gwen, falling in love with Gwen, or at least, you know, developing a crush on her, and then him looking up into this reflection of Spider-Man, kind of seeing that, like, that is the legacy, that is what I need to and want to be. Uh, and then, of course, him becoming his own Spider-Man and just the beautiful, gorgeous shot. One of my favorite shots from this first movie. Something I love about that first movie and this whole franchise that you see it continued in this film is just the the beautiful visuals and the, the art styles, especially how it changes and varies through the different uh, Spider-verses. Um, it really does look like a comic book come to life. So that's something I really love here. And then this... It looks like it might be new footage. Maybe it's from the first film and I just don't remember it, but it looks new to me. This, of course, is from the first movie, you know, the great ending moment with him and Peter B. Parker. I love that bond they formed. And then we jump into the new action here um, with that and then also a flashback to our relationship with his father in the film. Again, something heavily explored there. But then you have this shot right here where you can see Miles is walking away from his mother and father. There's some sort of party going on here. And again, I feel like this kind of goes into the whole, you know, he's growing up, he's maturing, he's changing, he's becoming his own man. And maybe he just like had some sort of outburst and you can kind of see like this, the expression, the surprise on his father's face there of like, whoa, he did not just do that, but he did. Um, so I'm really excited to see that. And then we get to where kind of our first look at this film came in uh, a little over a year ago now. It was like early December of 2021. Yeah, that was what last year was, um, where we got this little sneak peek. It wasn't a trailer, but it was like two minutes long. Um, where we basically got a glimpse of Miles, he's in his bedroom, and then Gwen contacts him through the Spider-Verse, opens up a little uh, portal within the multiverse, and is like, hey, you want to go for a ride? You want to go explore the Spider-Verse? And so that is exactly what they do, you know? They grab hands, really excited to see their romance explored here, and they go on a little adventure. Um, again, just loving that comic book artsy style going on. And then we enter one of our first moments here where things really go crazy with these cameos and different Spider-Verse variants. So you have Miles and Gwen here basically at what looks like almost like the center of the Spider-Verse because things are upside down, things are crazy here. So first one I wanna talk about is the big obvious one here. We have the Spider-Man PS4 variant um, from the Spider-Man PS4 video game. This is one where we saw the suit in the first movie in that little uh, you know Spider-Man headquarters you had the you had it on display. And this is one that has been rumored for a while now that the character would be appearing in this film. I did a video about it last month, I believe, uh, that he'll be appearing here. Um, so we get our first look at him. I'm not sure if we're going to actually hear him talk, what kind of role he's gonna have, if Yuri Lowenthal does the voice, reprises his role, all that. Not sure if that's gonna be the case or not, but still really cool that he's included in here nonetheless. We also have, uh, speaking of the Spider-Man PS4 video game, I, this may be a stretch, but this black and yellow suit definitely looks like the anti-aux suit from the Spider-Man PS4 video game. And then also we have, of course, the Future Foundation suit, or at least what looks like it. Um, looks like a thicker version of the suit, but here we have uh, you know, the, the version from the game. And then here's the anti-aux suit as well. So again, it looks very similar. Don't know if it is the same suit or same character, but I do kind of like that, that they're taking not only different Spider-Verse variants from different universes, from movies, comics, video games, all that stuff, but also different suits and making those different versions because that's a really cool way to uh, incorporate all that into this film. 
And then we get, of course, the iconic Spider Cop. So this was something that was teased yesterday. Yesterday, uh, Casey Walsh and some different uh, scoopers were teasing that like, hey, tomorrow you're going to be seeing Spider Cop in this trailer. Um, so look forward to that. So we have Spider Cop, of course, like a thing from the Spider-Man PS4 video game. Um, also, you have from the, the comic where Spider-Man PS4 is saying Spider Cop actually exists. I can't express how happy this makes me. So... I really hope we get to see these two actually meet because that would be hilarious. Again, don't know if Spider Cop is gonna be having a speaking role or anything, uh, but still cool uh, nonetheless. Now, another one I wanna talk about, which is kind of a little bit more obscure, we have these two right here. Now, I'm gonna be talking primarily about the taller one, uh, but this is from The Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows comic storyline. If we can move over, where Mary Jane and Peter Parker, they of course are married, and she becomes her own spider person as well. So Mary Jane Parker becomes Spinnerette. Now I'm assuming the, the little girl next to her is their daughter, Mayday Parker. So this is kind of a, I, I don't know if I'd really say obscure comic reference, but definitely something that a lot of people won't recognize. Um, if you're not a comics fan, I only know it because of the Marvel Legends figures, but um, looks really cool. I, I really like this inclusion. And then we have, of course, the bombastic Spider-Man. We'll talk about him a little bit more later. Uh, but I really want to put a focus on the werewolf Spider-Man back here, which, to be honest, I didn't even know was a thing. But yeah, apparently, Spider-Man was a werewolf at some point in the comics. So that is something we're getting translated here as well. And so just... A whole bunch of different Spider-Man characters here. Um, those are all the big ones that I can point out in the shot. If you see any other ones that you want to mention, let me know down in the comments below. But moving on to Miles and Gwen, they're looking up at something. We see that that something is indeed Peter B. Parker, which is amazing. This just puts such a huge smile on my face watching this trailer and seeing this because we didn't know if he was going to return. You know, obviously Jake Johnson's Peter B. Parker was such a huge character in that first movie, fell in love with him. Um, I remember not being a huge fan of the idea at first of like, oh, a Spider-Man in depression that's like, you know, overweight and like kind of a loser and all this stuff. But I loved his character in the movie, so I'm so excited to see these come back. You know, Jake Johnson, when we asked him about it in interviews and stuff, he was always like, oh, you know, I'd love to, but I haven't gotten the call. So, you know, the classic, actor NDA stuff um so it's great to see that he is actually coming back here we don't hear him um like hear his voice personally but we do get to see him and not only do we see him um he of course is wearing a very fuzzy comfy pink robe there which good for him but what you do notice that, that he is carrying around his body is um I don't know what it's called but it's like the little sack backpack like for the front of you thing that you would put a baby in so it looks like Peter B. Parker, he, once he got back to his universe, he worked things out with Mary Jane. They probably got back together and they had a baby, which honestly just makes me so happy for him because like that guy went through so much and especially like seeing how good of a mentor he was to Miles in that first movie, you know, he deserves it. So I'm, I'm so happy for him. Um, speaking of happy for people, I'm happy for Miles and Gwen. I'm happy to see that they're, uh, their relationship, their romance, uh, the, the spark is still there. You can see these two romantically sitting together upside down on a building here with a New York skyline. Um, I'm really excited to see the relationship, how far it goes and how far they dive deep into that in this movie. Um, and then we get introduced to a brand new character here who we've been hearing about for a while now, that Issa Rae was going to be voicing Jessica Drew. So we have our first look at Spider-Woman. So we can see Spider-Woman here is um, not exactly wearing the outfit I expected. I expected it to be pretty much the Jessica Drew Spider-Woman outfit from the comics. Um, just, of course, race bent because we know um, in the comics she's white. In this version, she's black, which cool. I figured it'd be, you know, pretty much the same look. But it's definitely a very uh, a different version of the character. But that's kind of the whole thing with the Spider-Verse um, in this movie is that things get wacky across the Spider-Verse. So you got that really cool afro. You got the, the boots, the leather jacket. She looks great there. And she actually, in fact, is fighting the vulture or at least a version of the vulture here so there's something we heard about in uh footage that was played at like some smaller convention um that we never got to see but it was like spider woman fighting a version of the vulture um so we have our first look at him here definitely more i'd say the colors are more realistic to a real life vulture rather than of course the bright green that vulture would wear in the comics 
Um, it still looks really cool. And then we get a little bit of backstory on Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-Man 2099, because he is being set up, at least in these trailers, as almost like the villain of this movie. Um, of course, he appeared in the post credit scene of the first movie, Into the Spider-Verse, and was being set up for, for a huge role here. And now he possibly is even the villain. Um, and the way I kind of look at it is he's almost like the Batman of these Spider-Verse characters, because he is, from what we've seen, a very aggressive, tense, angry guy who, again, um, kind of from what we've seen, it would make sense if he's kind of going for the perspective of like, oh, we should just kill the spot um, and not worry about trying to save him. And you see here in the shot, he is looking at a file, seems to be his own file, uh, where it looks like it is him and his daughter. So I'm assuming he has some tragic backstory here. He was probably married. He had a daughter. He lost his family. They died. And that's why he's so... Um, you know, angry and down in the dumps and like just full of grief. And that, that I think is a really cool explanation as to why he's acting. And I really hope maybe we even get flashbacks to him before he was Spider-Man because Spider-Man 2099 is such a, a rich character that I would love. I'm so excited to see him make his um, big screen debut in this film. So I hope we get really uh, a nice exploration of this character. And speaking of that, like I said, he's whipping the claws out, so it makes sense uh, with my theory there. Uh, but then we get the shot of him alongside Issa Rae's Spider-Woman. Kind of looks like she's going to be on his side, but just a really cool shot of those two right there. And then we have this uh, zoomed out shot where you have, again, uh, Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099. We have Miles, we have Gwen, and we have Peter B. Parker. So it seems like this is kind of the scene where he is just explaining things to them, explaining what is happening probably with the with the spa, what's going on. You can see all these details in the background. I feel like that's kind of showing, or at least a representation of like, hey, the multiverse, or at least the Spider-Verse is falling apart. You can see almost that web pattern and design. Um, who knows if we maybe even have like a Madam Web connection here as well. Uh, but I feel like it's called like the the web of destiny or something like that. So that would be cool if we're getting those kind of ties in here. Um, and then back to Miles and his mother, again, connecting things back home. And then it, it gets crazy again. I mean, we get spider get, get in right here where we just have a bunch of Spider-Verse variants attacking Miles Morales. Now we have another cameo here, at least a recognizable one for me. We have the armored Spider-Man, which I believe is a thing in the comics, but no, most notably I know it from Spider-Man the Animated Series all the way back in the 90s when we had that little Spider-Verse crossover where we had this version of Spider-Man. Then we get some other cool ones here. Um, this one, a lot of people have been saying is the Spider-Man PS4 variant. It also kind of looks similar to um, Spider-Man, to actually Tom Holland's Spider-Man suit from Spider-Man Par Far From Home. So that's a possibility as well. We've been hearing Tom Holland's Spider-Man is in this movie. Again, made a video about that last month. But then it gets crazy because we have here, um, off to the left corner, we have our first look at the Scarlet Spider, a.k.a. Ben Riley, where we heard he was going to be in this movie. Um, we've actually seen a first look at him in this movie, um, and it looks a little different. So are we going to be getting two Scarlet Spiders here? Because the one we saw previously was his original comic book design with basically the red and blue sweatshirt Spider-Man suit. But then this one is more closer to the ultimate Spider-Man design of Ben Riley Scarlet Spider, which is the one I'm more familiar with, so I really like seeing that this is included, um, but definitely quite interesting. Are we going to be having two different versions of the characters, or is it just that we have that main sweatpants and sweatshirt Spider-Man, Spider, Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley, and then this one is just like a cool little reference cameo? Not sure exactly what the case is going to be, but still cool nonetheless. And so then we got uh, some other cool Spider-Verse characters here as well. There, I believe, is another look at the Future Foundation suit. There's the Anti-Ox suit. There's just a whole bunch of different uh, suits going on here. And then we have actually, moving on a little bit, if we can move over, we have the Spider-Man PS1 version of Spider-Man. So we had Spider-Man PS4 previously. Now we have the PS1 version of Spider-Man, which is something I didn't know, is something that was pointed out to me on Twitter. Uh, but that is honestly hilarious and awesome that they decided to go on ahead and include that version of the character going all the way back to whatever year that came out in. It was a while ago. You can see... Um, the graphics were not great for that game back in the day, uh, but awesome to see its inclusion. And then one of my favorite parts here is we get, as I mentioned in the beginning, Spider Monkey. So there's a little Spider Monkey right here, which is hilarious. I mean, we had in the first movie Spider Ham, the pig version of Spider-Man, and now we have a Spider Monkey, which is just absolutely hilarious. 
Now, this shot is interesting. This is quite interesting to me because we have Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 29, D9. He is running towards this huge contraption, which I believe that is Miles in there. Now, I don't know what's going on here. This seems like it could be almost like uh, at the the center of the Spider-Verse or whatever the spot's plan is going on here. So I'm not sure how Miles got in there or whatever, but we get a great look here at Miguel O'Hara unmasked. Actually looks pretty uh, close to Oscar Isaac in real life. Of course, he does the voice here. So that's great to see. Miles, again, is being chased by all these Spider-Verse characters. We have our first look at actually probably one of the biggest surprises for me, Spider-Man Unlimited. So we get a couple different shots here of Spider-Man Unlimited. Of course, Spider-Man from the Spider-Man Unlimited cartoon series, uh, which I have not seen. Yet. This is probably the only Spider-Man animated series that I don't think I've seen any episodes. It is actually streaming on Disney Plus, so I guess I'll have to be watching that before I watch this film. Um, it's still really cool that we get this uh, this character's appearance. I don't know if the uh, the same voice actor is returning to do the voice, or again if it is just kind of a a fun little nod and Easter egg and a little background cameo. And then, like I said, we have the bombastic Spider-Man, which in the comics is basically when Spider-Man joins the Fantastic Four. Um, and gives up being Spider-Man. He can't, uh, you know, just put on the Spider-Man mask, so he just puts a bag over his head, and he becomes a Fantastic Four member. Now, you can see right here, he's not wearing a Fantastic Four uniform. That's because, of course, again, this is a Sony movie, so they probably had to change it so that they don't have connections to the Fantastic Four, because just to, you know, explain all that would be probably a whole big debacle. So they just made it a more Spider-Man design, just, you know, with the, the bag head and the bare feet. Um, so then we get this great shot here again. Love the art styles for this film of Gwen. Gwen is then going into action there. And then we get back to, um, again, what I previously mentioned um, with that first look sneak peek that we got about a year ago where Miguel Harris, Spider-Man 2099, is hunting down Miles. He grabs and he just slams him into the ground there. Um, this is from what we saw in that sneak peek um, in the universe of Spider-Man India, who we'll talk about in a second as well. But then when that is the end of the trailer, June 2nd, 2023, so guys, that is it. That was, like I said, a great trailer. Um, not even like a full-on trailer. It's basically just him talking with his mom and then a bunch of cool cameos and Easter eggs. So, but let's talk about some other things. What other characters we're gonna be seeing here? Well, I really hope that we will see the return of some of these other characters from the first film. You know, we have obviously Miles and Gwen are back. It's now being confirmed. We got a first look at Peter B. Parker. I feel like he's probably not gonna be as involved in the action, especially since he's a father now and may possibly even have his child with him. So he's probably in the movie, but probably taking a bit of a, a sideline seat when it comes to the action. But I really hope we get to see Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man Noir, John um, Mulaney as Spider-Ham, and SPDR and P Penny Parker, because I would love to see those characters return. There's been no indication that they will, but man, how can you do a Spider-Verse movie without Spider-Ham? And Spider-Man Noir, those are like two of the most iconic Spider-Verse variants. Uh, SPDR, I mean, she's cool, but like, I really don't know her outside of that first movie. Um, but what we do know is going to be this movie that we didn't get touched on in this film is, like I said, Spider-Man India. So, Pavitar Prabhakar, I pronounced that so badly, I'm so sorry. Uh, but this is our first look at Spider-Man India. This was released with the, uh, uh, the producers, uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, alongside Haley Steinfeld. They did a little kind of like after show thing for the trailer on YouTube Premium, where we got these first looks at Spider-Man India, as well as also Hobie Brown, aka Spider-Punk, who's going to be voiced by Daniel Kaluuya. So he looks great here. Again, I love the, uh, the differences in these animation styles. Every universe we go to is going to have a different animation style. So that's going to be a lot of fun to explore and play around with. Now, Cyborg Spider-Woman is a character that we've seen in merchandise but we haven't seen in any actual footage itself so that's something else to note and uh yeah i believe spider-man um the japanese spider-man uh from the japanese spider-man cartoon or not cartoon but live action tv show is gonna be involved here as well we haven't seen any first looks on that either but anyway this was a great trailer i really enjoyed it uh but guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below are you excited for spider-man across the spider-verse and which of these spider-verse variants are you most excited to see so anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I can keep it to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life.